Hello and welcome back to the Chatter Cave podcast, where I'm not with Connor today. He's got the week off because we couldn't do our usual Wednesday slash Thursday recording session. So I said I'll try and hopefully get out a solo podcast to cover us this week so there's not a delay and it's not a week off entirely from the show like there has been sometimes. So I thought I'd do this. But yes, check out podcast where we usually discuss media in the form of reviews or just topical based discussions. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm your host, Ranking Thomas Hughes, and today I'm doing a movie review, which is my easiest one for solo review uh, podcasting. It's just a lot easier and it's less need of a discussion. Unless, you know, the movie deems a discussion, which I'm pretty certain I'm the only one who's seen this movie out of anyone I know. Because it's only just recently came out in, on digital library. It came out last, I don't know if it was November or December last year in, uh, in uh, America. I'm going to double check that note. Um, so it came out December the 8th slash 9th in America last year. But it obviously didn't come out till end of November uh, in the UK this year. So it took about a year. But yes, I'm going to be talking about the mean one, the 2022 a parody movie that basically just is the Grinch, but a horror movie. I'll label it though on the video as a 2023 release due to the fact that, technically speaking, UK and a lot of other countries didn't see it released until 2023. So I'll just label it as a 2023 horror movie, uh, horror movie in the descriptions and stuff rather than 2022. And when this first got announced, because obviously this got revealed after the Winnie the Pooh hype uh, at the end of last year because that was a massive amount of hype for that film and it turned out to be a part of shit but uh, I'll get into that in a bit um, so they, obviously this got revealed and I remember seeing it and being like okay um, it looks alright it looks passable in the same, same sense of the Winnie the Pooh one I was like as long as it's in the mediocre range I can't really complain too much uh, obviously, there'll be some stuff in it more like that I complain about, which there is. I'm not going to lie, it, it isn't a masterpiece, but it does land in that mediocre territory, which is watchable and passable. It's one of those ones that you might come back to in a couple of years' time and watch it again, or you might throw it on with a bunch of friends and have a laugh with, because it generally is funny. And obviously, this came to light during the Winnie Pooh hype, and it was going straight to YouTube, I believe, originally, and then. Because of that hype for Winnie the Pooh, they decided to push it for a more cinematic release. And I say it went, uh, went into the cinemas in America for a short time. Not too sure how well it did. Um, but that was it. You didn't hear much about it then. And then out of nowhere, I was scrolling through social media the other day. And I saw an advert for it. And I was like, hey. And I looked into it. And it actually had been released just recently. Within like the last week or two uh, on digital. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out at some point. I was going to watch it. Uh, over the weekend, but I, every time I went to watch it, I had to get falling asleep um, before I even put it on. So when I woke up at like fucking like half past five, six in the morning, I thought, "Fuck it, I'm gonna stick it on, watch it out the way." And I had a decent time. It was it was it was interesting. Um, it it has the idea of what if one slight thing can change everything. So in this case, it shows you at the start with Cindy. I was saying I'm not going to spoil this too much. So I'll try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. So it shows you at the start with uh, Cindy that basically in one reality where she's nice to the Grinch, which they can't call in this, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, and it's all happy as Larry and it's pretty much probably going to go along the same route as more than likely the actual Dr. Seuss source material. Um, but then it, it, the narrator... Who obviously the dinner very obviously they're going along the Doctor Seuss theme line of having the narrator over the top of it, and he explains that what if I tell you basically that's bullshit? It didn't go down that way, and he shows you the triviality of the mom finding uh, Cindy with this weird man in the house. Obviously, you don't see who it is; you just see the Santa Claus outfit, and she just beats the shit out of him, and eventually dies at his hands. Um. And basically, Cindy calls him a monster, and that sends him on a path of being a monster. And he just essentially haunts this town in the mountains. So if anyone goes in the mountains, you're 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 fucked. Especially if you start doing anything Christmasy, you're fucked because um, he'll just 
feed on you. But then even in the town, if any slight Christmas, you could, you could hum a Christmas song, it'd come out of nowhere and it'd fuck you up. Um, you can just be wearing some Christmas, it's Christmas jumper, which is very baggy. I didn't realise how baggy it was. Um, it'd come and fuck me up. And basically, it's, it's a very simple premise of, obviously, uh, Cindy, uh, Cindy, 20 years later, going back to New... Uh, New Newville, I think it's called in this. Um, let's see if I can find what it's called. Um, it doesn't seem to say on IMDb. Goddamn Amazon adverts. I don't give a shit about whatever you're trying to sell me. Uh, do, 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 do. No, IMDb doesn't say exactly. It just says in a sleeping mountain town. I'm pretty certain it's Newville. Um, obviously taking the piss out of Whoville. Basically, she goes back there 20 years later with her dad, and she's trying to basically get over what happened to her mom all those years ago. And, of course, they're the only festive ones, which causes the mean one to come out and kill her dad. Obviously, all this is in the trailer, so it's not really spoilery. If you've seen the trailer, it's all in the trailer. And, basically, the premise then is her trying to convince the cops that the, the, the Christmas killer, I believe she calls him, is out on the on the run still, and they need to deal with him. And as the film goes along, obviously more festive people start appearing. Or in one case, a guy literally orders something, opens it, and it's a wrong parcel. It's Christmas stuff, and he rings the bells, being like, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" Brings the killer on top of him, and um, yeah, the rest of it is basically her eventually training to fight in the big finale, which again is in the trailer. You see her literally like, doing some like training montage, which is like a, a lot expanded in this movie. And then right at the end, she has this fight with her, the meme one, which is is a decent way to end the film. It is a really decent finale, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's pretty. It's a pretty simple movie. The kills are there. It's pretty gory. Uh, obviously, it's, it's let down by some visual effects with some of these kills because there's a couple of visual effects, not even just with the kills, but some of the action scenes, which are very bad visual-wise. But I was speaking to someone, and I was like, oh, I finally watched this film. And I said to them, the CGI is bad, but I didn't expect it to be good. Obviously, I heard before I even watched this last year when it first came out, uh, when the reviews came out, I heard the CGI was terrible. Um, but at the same time, I never expected it to be good anyway. Um... And they agreed to me. They're like, "Yep, I agree. It's not going to be some sort of masterpiece of like." I think I quoted saying it was something like it wouldn't be something like Avatar. You, you're not you're going to be going in this expecting like an Avatar level of CG. Um, you'll be expecting just cheap CGI, and it's not the worst. But at the same time, obviously, it's not the best. It's slightly above average. You can tell it's fucking fake. Like, hands down, you can tell it's fake. But it's passable. It doesn't really affect the film. Um, the writing isn't the worst. It's cheesy at times. So there's a lot of like really hilarious jokes that I found. Obviously, because as I say, they can't call him the Grinch because of copyright reasons. Because unlike when the Pooh, which obviously is in um, the public domain now, the Grinch isn't. So it, it full on is a parody. They can't make references in terms of verbal. Like they can't be blatant saying, "Oh, it's the Grinch." Because they do go to say it multiple times, but then they play it on as a joke of someone shading something very similar to Grinch, which I did crack up. It was, was quite funny. I mean, there's in the character called um, Zeus, as in like the god of the god Zeus, um, but they just call him Doc. But if you say it quick enough, it sounds like Doctor Zeus, which I found hilarious. And there's a few little references to other Doctor Zeus properties. And there's a bar called Hortons, which is obviously Horton is a who. And there's a drink in the film, which is a reference to. Dr. Seuss's real life name. And, but yeah, and obviously there's even a reference to Max the dog, but it's more of a plushie in uh, the, the Grinch's, uh, sorry, the mean one, sorry, the mean one's cave. So I like the fact there's little references to uh, what it's from, but of course they can't fully blatantly talk about it. So they have to kind of just subtly throw it in. And as I say, with the the, ne the proper name of the Grinch, they kind of just have to work a way around it, which they do, and I find it hilarious, which is obviously why then this guy, the Dr. Zeus guy, is actually like, I'll just call him the meme one. 
Let's have six. You can't actually legally call him the Grinch, which, you know, unlike I say with the Winnie the Pooh one, where they can physically literally call him Winnie, uh, Piglet, and all that. This uh, they can't. But unlike that Winnie the Pooh movie, as I said, this isn't a bag of shit. I think out of both of them, I was a bit more interested in watching the Winnie the Pooh one because, like, the sky's the limit what they could do with that for the fact that it's in the the public domain. And I was like, okay, let's see how this works. And when I finally watched it, when did it come out? It come out was it February? I think about February, March time, wasn't it? Early this year. And I, d- I just watched it. There was a couple of moments that I enjoyed, but as an overall film, I was like, this is straight up dog shit. It's one of the worst films I've seen. It's it, easily probably the worst film I've seen this year. Or oh, it, it, it's up there, but there's a couple that I've seen that are like one star movies. If I could give it a zero, I would. Uh, but there's definitely a couple of films up there with one stars. But I said, this one isn't. It's. Under that mediocre category, so it's around, you know, between the five and six mark, which is what I wanted that Winnie the Pooh film to be. I wanted it to be in that region, but they kind of fucked it up. Hopefully, its sequel, when it comes out next year, improves drastically. I mean, some of the, the set photos I've seen in terms of them going for the more, uh, putting the more money into the practical side of it, making it less of like a really stupid Halloween costume and more of an actual, like, it's their flesh. So the fact I've seen some of these images of the Tigger and Winnie and all that, hopefully that means they're putting a lot more effort into this rather than just going, okay, let's just fucking throw this out and hope we get loads of money, which they did for what the fucking property was. It got fucking loads. I mean, if I if I quickly Google uh, the Win the Pooh film and see it, and sh- to say how much uh, money it got, so blood and honey. So it had a budget of about a thousand dollars apparently, and it made like five point two million according to the internet, which is a ridiculous amount. And you can see why uh, it's getting this sequel. And as I said, hopefully it's so much better than the first one because the first one was awful. But if we compare the budget with this one, this one I can't see how much the budget was. It didn't make the millions; it made thousands. But I'm I'm guessing it still made a profit because I can't see it costing a megaton. Um, because I say according to IMDb here, it co- it made uh six hundred and twelve thousand. The mean one did, but I can't see a budget total on here. Um, but again, I can't see it being. I reckon you're probably looking around the thousand mark as well. So you're probably looking at least like a, a decent enough profit of a couple of thousand, about five hundred thousand ish, which again okay, isn't as big as the Winnie the Pooh one. But for a film that turned out to be better than the Winnie the Pooh one, I won't really complain. But yeah, I think this what makes this film great as well is the performance of getting the name up here so I don't fuck it up. Uh, David Howard Thornton obviously plays the mean one. He of course is better known as Art the Clown in the Terrifier duology or trilogy now. Uh, and I mean he's brilliant in the Terrifier movies, especially Terrifier Two. He's phenomenal, and he brings that quirkiness, that silentness, that the physical acting rather than the verbal acting to this mean one performance. And it it is just he does a really great job. He's hilarious. Like I I feel like even when Art is killing, sometimes it is quite funny the way he goes around with it. Like he's like sort of like ooh, and like just like his crazy hand movements and facial reactions, and that plays into this meme on performance heavily. And he does a really good job, and he helps sell this movie. I think that's what if you think about it, what kind of makes the Winter Pooh ones suffer a little bit is the fact that. Because them being more animals, I'm using the quotations here, um, air quotes for because ugh, it's clearly a person in a fucking suit. Um, obviously, because them being more animals, obviously they can't really speak apart from that one line at the end, which was like, okay, what what the fuck? Obviously, with the Grinch or the mean one, sorry, he can technically speak, but they do a good way of not having him speak again. This is it's like the very end. He makes verbal dialogue, but most of the time it's just literally like roars and just like facial like smiles and like evil grins and it, it's just it is just really good uh, the way he does it and I, I do hope to see him in a lot more films where he gets to show off this and that's why I'm definitely looking forward to Terrify 3 because fuck me I mean the, the, the little teaser there at least I was like yeah I'm going to cinema to watch that as long as they put a decent time on it um Obviously, the rest of the cast, obviously, you've got the actress who plays Cindy. She does a decent job um, of being this someone who's dealing with past trauma 
which again is very similar to the Wind of Pearl, which is like one of the main characters that is dealing with past trauma. But I feel like that works better in this one because in that one, it was just like a bit some random guy and it didn't really play heavily into the overall story. Just it was just her being scared. Whereas in this, she's literally terrified because of this monster killing both her mom and her dad. And it's her dealing with like nightmares, having to do, be in hospital, um, trying to deal with getting people to know what's out there and them just not believing her. So she does a really good job of showing this trauma. And then when it goes to the more action-packed finale where she's you know training like candy cane shotguns and ball ball grenades, like the finale is just batshit crazy. The fact that they utilize weapons that are just Christmas themed is perfect. It it is a good laugh. And it it's definitely something if you haven't seen, just check it out at least once. Uh, you might hate it, you might love it. I think in terms of films that are stupid in this sense, it's not my favourite of the year. My favourite would probably be that Sloffer House because that was just fucking batshit crazy, hilarious. I fucking love that. But it's definitely a, a, a solid pushing above average movie. It's not as bad as, if you look at the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, that, that for another level, I think it was like 17% or something stupid like that. Audience is about 49, but verified. If you go on all, it's like 61%. It's actually in the positive. Um, and IMDb sits at like 3.8. But the highest meta score that you can see on IMDb is like 50, which is reasonable. I'm going to actually go a bit more than that one. Obviously, out of 10, not out of 100, I'm going to go a bit more than 50, the 5 mark, but still. But yes, yeah, so obviously, you've got your rest of your cast. You've got obviously your coppers. You, you know, you run the mill police officers. You've got one that's a bit more of a veteran and one who's just a new rookie and they both play the roles pretty much how you'd expect them um and obviously you've got dr zeus character who's the the local drunk slash nutcase and he plays the part pretty well he, he definitely shows it obviously he knows the knowledge but no one will believe him because he's a town drunk and he, he plays that perfectly and um, you got the town mayor who's trying to basically push to be elected again but obviously she's got some dark secrets hidden and she does a good job of basically showing that though she's the mayor, she, she's a bit of an ass. bit like um, the mayor in the first Jaws where he's clearly, um, he, 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 he can clearly see these shark attacks, but he's trying to be like, no, it's fine, everyone go out. And she's the, kind of similar in this sense. Um, I mean, most of the law enforcement are kind of like in this, apart from the rookie. Because they're all basically being like, oh, these murders in the mountains, these murders on in this diner, they're, they're out of our jurisdiction, they're literally like the state business, and they're like, what the fuck? Like, why can't you get involved in this? And obviously there's clearly something that they're hiding, which you see as the film goes along, stuff gets revealed. Um, but but yeah, it's, it, I think like, for a parody film, it, it, it's good. Like, if you like, you got, like, if you like your films that a spoofs, as I say, stuff like scary movie when stuff that's taking someone else's property and just taking the piss out of it or drastically changing it. As I say, like with scary movie, it's drastically changing in the sense of scare, uh, Scream is a horror film and it's it's going, yeah, it's still kind of horror, but it's pushing more of the comedy through it. Whereas this, obviously, The Grinch is a family Christmas movie. This is going, okay, push that. It's not a family m movie. Christmassy, yes. Get rid of the family. It's more of a horror Christmas, but at the same time, it is a comedy. I mean, there's one shot which I thought they were going to do like a a Bigfoot moment, but it was just like a quick run across the screen. I was like, they're going to do like a weird moment where he just turns to the camera like Bigfoot, the classic Bigfoot picture. Um, but yeah, obviously, all this eventually like brings a lot of people's eyes on this town because obviously it's a killing spree. I said, there's enough. There's enough horror in this. To get people who love horror going, there's enough Christmas in this to draw people in who want a, a sort of festive horror movie, and there's enough com like stupid, very cheesy comedy in this to make you laugh, um, and just in have an enjoyable time. Um, but yeah, if, if I think if I was to give this a rating out of ten, hmm, a bit debating this. I'm definitely going in the five region. I don't think it's anything above fo like five in terms of ratings um which as i say is what you kind of want with one of these films 
yeah, it'd be amazing if it's the case of like Slaughter House, which is like really entertaining. And for me, that's like a seven pushing eight. Um, but I feel like for what this is, how cheap it is, around the five mark is acceptable. I mean, I've rated this higher than a couple of big budget movies I've this year. I.e., uh, the ones that come to mind is Insidious, the new one, and uh, was it sixty five of Adam Driver? Fucking those two movies sucked ass. Um, so I'll, be, I'll give it a better rating than them because I, g- I generally had a hilarious, a fun time of it. I love the ending. I love the way they play on a lot of the actual Grinch lore and work it into their own fucked up sense. So yeah, if I was to give it a rating out of ten. Fuck it. I'll give it a six. It was it was generally funny. I I was I've been debating for a while, but yeah, six. If they improved on some of the CG, it pushing further into the sixth region. And if just they gave the meme one a lot more time on screen, it'd be perfect. I mean, it, it was error and thirty three minutes, um, and it's a fifteen rating. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't push for an eighteen, and. As I say, but I feel I feel like the reason why you don't get much of the meme on the screen is just because it obviously with him being less verbal, a bit like Art the Clown, um, you need characters to push a story, which is obviously Cindy and the police officers and the mayor. They're the ones pushing the story ahead. Um, meme one, though it'd be great to see more, he can't really push the story, uh, which is obviously why, if you think about it, if obviously Terrified 2, it was like, it, I think the biggest problem with that film is it's too long. Um, that's because they give you so much of art as well as the actual story. But this, it balances just right. Though I say I would like to see, a, there's a few things I would like to have seen more in it. Um, but I say maybe like a little bit of a, more of a budget. Um, it could have come out, of, a, obviously a lot more in the sense of like say Sloth or House, which as I say, it's a stupid ass horror film, but it looks like it had a decent budget behind it, and that's what helped it be as good as it was. I say a bit more budget behind this, and it could have been good. I, I, I'm interested to see if they do a sequel because it kind of ends in the sense of there might be. There's a possibility that could expand the story going forward. If they do, I hope they take the win the poo approach of putting a little bit more money into it, but obviously because it didn't do as well as that. Um. It didn't. It obviously didn't make the millions. It probably won't get the sequel, and even if it did, they probably wouldn't put as much budget. But for what we've got, I feel like we got a decent, festive, uh, horror slasher flick, which is good. I definitely, obviously, in terms of horror slasher as well, I do want to see that new. Um, it's a wonderful knife. Obviously, which itself is a play on obviously uh, the, the very old black and white movie. Um, it's a wonderful life. But also going in the slasher trope and time travel mechanics. It's mashing up a lot of things. Obviously, it's not a parody like this. It's just a parody in the terms of the title, I believe. Um, then again, I've never actually watched Dreams of Wonderful Life. Uh, not my kind of cup of tea. Unlike this, which is just about my cup of tea. And I'm being interested to get Hayden's opinion on it when uh, I finally get to sit down and watch it. Because obviously, she's not here this weekend, which is... Uh, what I watched by myself, but when I eventually get her to sit through and watch it, I'll be interested to see her opinion on it because, as I say, it's fucking crazy. And I know she likes uh, the Jim Carrey Grinch, um, so we'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, but obviously, uh, MVP for this film, it, it'd have to be uh, David Howard Thornton as the mean one. He, it, he just is the performance is perfect. Um, it's everything you want from someone who's going for the more. Uh, physical acting rather than verbal acting um, it's just great um, and I, as I, I do hope to see him in more projects going forward I, I'm pretty certain, I don't know if I'm going to look at his IMDB a sec um, so according to this the only real thing I know or, or, or I've actually heard of is Terrifier 3 so that's all he's really got coming out and that's obviously next year this is will be this is obviously his first festive horror movie, and obviously that would be his next one. Um. So yeah, I do hope he, he gets more roles because he's a, he's a really good actor in the sense of being able to physically show off uh, his acting rather than being like someone who 
can deliver a massive speech. So he has his own. He's in that one. His own style of acting, which is is perfect. Um, runner up. I mean, the only real one that obviously would st- stand out is Cindy. Obviously, the, uh, the actress who's played by is Crystal Martin. She plays Cindy in this. I mean, she's the only real one that gets a heavy amount of screen time, and the fact that she does a really good job early on of showing her physical trauma to everything that's happened, and then eventually leading down the line to her being this fucking badass who's like Laws the mean one in the like, goes to town fighting with this motherfucker, rigged this entire house with but like, booby traps. Got like managed to get like people on the side to basically help fight, and then that does that scene. It's in the trailer when she's got like, she pulls like a baseball bat at the snow. It's got like fucking Christmas lights, and she's like, "Yep." And, I mean, she even throws in a couple of like one liners, which are just like so cheesy as fuck, but are hilarious at the same time. So I mean, she's the only one that really stands out above the rest due to the fact that she gets the most screen time which makes sense because even the Grinch story it's obviously uh, the Grinch and Cindy that get a lot more of the screen time so it makes sense in this parody that those two uh, the mean one and Cindy would be the ones that get full uh, centre since they are heavily linked um, if I was to pick a favourite moment without spoiling anything it, it would probably be the last act the the house fight it just has everything you want it has stupid uh looking weapons um it has over the top uh like fighting and it has a a decent solid ending to the fight which plays on obviously the grinch trope to obviously his heart so i won't get to too much details with that but it, it does a good job with that and it fully reveals why the meme one is like he is which is obviously what you kind of want so it, it does a good job with that so i'd definitely say that the last act uh the last battle is what i'd say is my favorite part of this film um okay then if if you've seen the meme one if you have put your thoughts of it in the comments below um connor should be back next week not sure yet what we're going to do in terms of podcasts. Obviously, we're going more festive. Apart, I think the only festive one that we're not doing is the obviously uh, the Game Awards one, when we're just reacting to the winners and seeing uh, if what we chose in that podcast, which it will be in the link, uh, description below, if what we chose there is what came out on top. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure yet. I know I was on about we could always bring back up Muppets Christmas Carol and just the Christmas Carol like films in general because obviously there's a fuck ton of Christmas Carol films uh, out there and I might also bring up just the fact that I'm not, I hate I really hate Christmas TV movies I'm getting sick of them now every time I walk into a room someone's watching them and it, they're just it's just the same fucking film I even had a comment. Uh, when I walked in and was like, wait, isn't this the same film he's watching earlier? And I was like, they're like, no, it's not the same film. But I'm pretty certain the cast is more more of the same. And I was like, that just shows how bad these movies are. So we might be talking this like Christmas movies in like Christmas TV movies and like the Christmas Carol movies in general. But I'll have the discussion with him to sort that out uh within the next week so we know exactly what we are doing. Um but yeah obviously if you want to check out the Grinch reviews we've done in terms of the actual uh, not parody Grinches obviously on the old old podcast we covered the Jim Carrey Dr. Seuss I think James might have been on that one not 100% sure on the top of my head but obviously I'll put that in the link below obviously, and we, uh, I know my, myself and Alex not last year I think it was the year before we covered the uh, Illumination adaption which obviously started Bendit coming back to again I'll put that in the link below Um but yeah, uh, you can check out the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, um, Audible, and just majority of podcasting platforms. Uh, obviously, check us out on social media because I, I put a lot of the thumbnails up on Instagram. I'm starting to now put them up on Facebook as well. I've ticked that little box at the bottom of Instagram, which puts them on both platforms. So check us out on there. Um, all socials are in the 
description below. So easy enough to access. They're in every single video if you're watching on YouTube. Um, not too sure of the audio side of it. I'd have to look into that. But yeah, uh, that is it. That my, my mic just went full red in that little clap. Uh, that is it for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this solo podcast, this movie review, this non-spoiler movie review. It's very rare. I don't go into details heavily. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this 1st of December because that's when this is going out. Kicking off Christmas. Uh, well, kicking off December with a bang, with a festive horror movie. Good choice, Tom. Good choice. But yes, I hope you enjoyed and I shall hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.